Ah, the dissertation. The ultimate document that guarantees you the coveted title of Doctor of Philosophy. It demonstrates your hard work, intellectual skill, and persistence of many, many years of work. But before we discuss this document, I have a question for you. Would you attempt to climb Mount Everest without first seeing a road map and only after climbing a small hill in your neighborhood? Of course not. Now this question seems absurd because no person would ever think of such an endeavor. Now you would actually need to know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, you would see a road map for the journey. You would maybe hire a team, invite others to join you. And you need to understand the technical elements of each leg of the summit before you acquire the proper equipment to take on each section. Now you might ask, what does Mount Everest have to do with a dissertation? Now, in today's episode, I talk about how it's important to understand what the dissertation is before we even think about applying for grad school. And if you are in graduate school, it's important to put the dissertation into perspective. Uh, too many times, the document gets left out of a conversation until it's too late or when candidates are too far along in their studies and in their programs and are inundated with stress. I think that if we have a good understanding of the document, we are able to thrive in academia. Now, putting the dissertation into perspective will hopefully give you some a breathing room and journey, and if you're thinking about applying to a graduate program, understanding the specific purpose of the dissertation might set you up to be successful so that you can invest your time uh, in other activities so that you don't go too far along and then realize that you have to produce this very specific type of writing genre. Now, if you are new to Office Hours, uh, this is a channel where talk all about surviving and thriving in academia from the perspective of a first generation, formerly a documented scholar. Uh, today we talk about the elephant in the room. Welcome to Office Hours. This is Office Hours with Juan Manuel, creating an academia without walls so you can thrive on your journey. The dissertation document is the culmination of a four to six year process and a decade long journey to get tenure, if you're choosing to go into academia and become a tenured professor. Now, each field has its requirements or conventions about what is included in the actual document, but the dissertation is a testament of your years of research in the field, in a lab, conducting interviews, or in the archives. It is a document created under the guidance of your dissertation committee, uh, which consists of anywhere in most cases between three to five people who are experts in your field. Now, even if you don't want to go into academic, uh, the academic route, the dissertation is a small portion of your long career. The remarkable thing <laughs> about this document is that it's a unique genre of writing. You have to learn to write for one time in your life, and it will be read by mainly in, by your uh, uh, committee members, which is a handful of people. And if you're lucky, another 10 people might find your dissertation online in a database. Now, it's important to keep this in mind as you start, uh, continue, or in the final stages of a graduate program. Now, in my six-year journey of graduate school in a humanities program, I saw too many friends and colleagues struggle because the dissertation became an Everest. It became a mountain that they had to summit. Now, it was as if they were trying to write a book and um, forget it that they were actually at the start of a training program to climb a mountain, to climb their Everest. Now, the unfortunate thing is that it's no fault of their own. Their worry and anxiety was completely valid. Now, we don't circulate dissertations in the public domain because it is a bizarre style of, of writing. Uh, we don't actually see a dissertation in advance and its, component, and, and its components until we are building one ourselves, which is very alarming. Now, most graduate students enter graduate school with the idea that they are going to write a book. Um, and that that dissertation is the book manuscript, when in fact it's not. I know I did, and I know my colleagues did as well at very different institutions. Now this sets us up for a lot of stress in a period of our life already filled with much stress already, 
if you're in a graduate program, perhaps you're at a different stage of your life, you have family, you have kids, uh, you need additional sources of income, uh, so you're navigating a lot of things in this, in this period. And if you're a first generation um, scholar, or perhaps a, a, a black indigenous or, or a scholar of color, um, and you're navigating multiple responsibilities, the dissertation can be uh, an insurmountable feat that oftentimes, unfortunately, leads very smart, very talented um, scholars of color to leave academia precisely because this Mount Everest just gets in the way of, of them achieving uh, these amazing um, uh, thoughts and this amazing research. Now, I think it's important that we understand what the dissertation is um, to s help us take a step in our career um, in academia or elsewhere. But in order for us to understand what that step would look like, we need to first identify how to read the dissertation, understand its components. Um, now, here are my suggestions um, for understanding the dissertation. Um, and I would recommend that you do this before you even think about applying to graduate school um, or if you are already in a program and are actively in graduate work or are somewhere in the early stages of having everything but the dissertation, this is, these are my recommendations for that you understand how a, a dissertation functions. For those about to start or are thinking about applying to graduate school, I would recommend that you read at least three dissertations in your field. Now, these can be downloaded from Open Dissertation Access Library, or you can visit your uh, university's library, or if you're thinking about applying to a, very, uh, a specific a graduate school, go to that your desired school's library and download a couple of the dissertation from the department you wish to apply to. Now, looking into uh, these dissertations will actually give you an idea of what the students uh, produced in that program. It'll give you uh, an idea of the type of uh, tone. It'll give you an idea of the type of mechanics uh, that are included, the number of chapters. Now, break down those components for each of these documents. Think about how many pages are included in the document, how many words, how many chapters, how many references, what type of references, and also what were their methods. Now, there's always a method section, and this is important because it will give you an idea of how research was conducted. This will give you a picture of the type of work that you might be doing or might be expected to do in that specific program. Also, look at the author's tone and are they writing in first person or third person? Now, how are they writing in relationship to the field's conventions of academic research? Now, by this, I mean that in some fields, it's very common um, to use the first person, uh, first person pronoun like I in their statements. In other fields, it's not. Now, this is important because oftentimes I saw a lot of peers struggle with the actual mechanics of writing themselves. Right? And if we understand a little bit of what, what's expected in our field, then we can understand or anticipate some of those challenges so that we don't confront those head on directly when we're trying to write the document. Ask yourself, can you see yourself doing that type of writing? Look at the writing tone, look at the structure, look at the number of pages and ask yourself, can I see myself doing this type of writing? Can I produce this amount of, of, of work? Now, breaking down the dissertation to its parts, uh, lets you know what it was to be successful for a person in that specific department um, to get their dissertation through committee. It's important to know that the dissertation goes through at least it goes through two rounds of, of complete revisions for the committee. Now, the committee is a team of scholars that you select to advise you during your studies, and they're going to be the ones who help you uh, shape and ultimately approve your project, you're entering into a conversation with these experts in this field, which can be very exciting, um, but also it can pose uh, a lot of uh, uh, stress if you are maybe looking at the type of writing that they're doing that maybe doesn't line with yours, or maybe there is a way in which they're approaching just the work method, uh, the way that you're working um, to produce the document. You know, uh, on a separate episode, I'm going to be talking about the strategies for selecting your committee, which is going to be also an important part for thriving in academia. But for now, we're going to hold those thoughts. If after understanding the components of the document, you feel you're up for the journey, then I would recommend that you think about applying to graduate school. If you have questions, then seek those questions out from the graduate advisor of the program where you want to matriculate. For those already in a graduate program, or if you're still working in your coursework, 
at your next colloquium or pro seminar, ask your professor to facilitate the exercise I mentioned above. You'd be surprised how many professors forget to encourage students to understand the dissertation. Most are so removed from the process of writing the dissertation that they forget that there's a specific convention to writing the document. They forget the, uh, the different components, the number of chapters, or even the, the front pages, the formatting of this document that is required um, in order for it to get approved. So ask your uh, professors at the next uh, colloquium or pro seminar to host a session and breaking down the, 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 the dissertation. And if you already did this, congrats. Thank you, professor, because you're already on, a, on our road to being successful. Now, for those of you who have completed your coursework and have completed all the requirements and have everything but the dissertation, now find a good friend in your program and do this exercise with them. Have them identify three dissertations that were written within the um, within your program, and you identify three dissertations as well. And go ahead and compare uh, what you found in those three different um, dissertations. Uh, look at the number of chapters, look at the introduction, look at the tone, look at the references, uh, do they include illustrations? And after you've done this exercise, discuss it with them. Now, I did this exercise with a good friend and colleague after we took our qualifying exams. Uh, we should have done it sooner uh, before we did that, perhaps earlier in the coursework, just so that we knew what we were uh, going to do. If you take these initial steps to break down the dissertation and its components, you're going to be on your road to thriving in academia. Oftentimes, we use the phrase, a good dissertation is a done dissertation, as a way to encourage each other to know that we should put the dissertation in perspective. And I think it's important to also recognize that we need to understand the actual components of the dissertation to know what a done dissertation looks like. So go ahead and take the time to break down the dissertations and if you have any questions, go ahead and reach out to me and I can uh, go ahead and give you even um, some of the components that were involved in my dissertation. Now for those of you already in graduate work who have everything in the dissertation, go ahead and comment below and tell us what are some of the components of your dissertation. How many chapters are you thinking about writing or are required in your uh, field? Uh, perhaps what is the tone of voice? And uh, maybe uh, what is the usual turnaround time um, for producing such a document? Now, tune in next time when I talk about that taboo R word in academia. Now, it's a topic that might be antithetical to graduate life and its constant demand for us to produce. I talk about the importance of carving out 24 hours of rest during your academic journey and how this is actually contributes to your productivity. Now, we need to cultivate a culture of rest to cultivate a culture of transformative research. So before I talk about what applying to graduate school looks like and any of the other uh, technical components, I'm going to spend a little bit of time in, uh, in, in situating the importance of rest in order for you to thrive in academia. Okay, I'll see you next time during Office Hours. This is Office Hours with Juan Manuel, creating an academia without walls so you can thrive on your journey.